there we go it's recording so what i'm going to do is i am going to share my screen um which uh i've got here so that will make you even smaller on my screen but um so can you see that then yes yeah yes. yeah great great now i can't actually see you so i'm just going to try and yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got you up there. I'll have to kind of shift between that because, it, oh, there we go. I can see some of you now, so that's great. Um, it's just that it's nice to have a little bit of interaction and I'm really happy for people to just shout out or say, oh, hang on, what did you mean by that or, or anything? So this isn't me uh, sitting here going, oh, right, we're going to go through this bit by bit. Um, I have got, I can go through it bit by bit and I will, but um, if you just have a chat, uh, just shout out to me because I, I might not be able to see you. Um, so let me get going. I'll talk and you interrupt whenever you want. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I'm here to talk from the recruiter's corner, looking for a position during a pandemic, you know, how and why you might want to do it. And I, I'd love to explore a bit more about that once I've gone through these slides. I've got a number of slides to look at. But first of all, just a little bit about me. This is me. Um, and in fact, I'm based in Edinburgh, so it's morning here. Not too bad. I mean, well, it's nine o'clock in the morning, so that's fine. Um, I was a linguist. I actually came through the state sector and was a linguist. Um, I went to Oxford, but then I went straight into education, so straight into teaching, actually, in 1993. Aged, obviously, about two at the time, because, you know, 1993 is such a long time ago. And uh, uh, then I... I did those. I actually became a head of department after um, uh, just a couple of years, and then another head of department role, then deputy head. But in actual fact, for most of my career, I was a head. Um, the way it worked because of, of of promotion and so on, and that was in the UK and Australia. And I had um, I've got three children, the youngest of whom is eleven, and they were all born when I was a head. And that's one of the things that I. I actually feel very strongly about, about women's choices and um, women being able to choose paths that they take. And uh, I'm not saying that, oh, you know, this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't do. But I do think that, that it is absolutely um, possible to be a senior leader and have children too. And <clears throat> it's hard, obviously everything's hard because you're balancing all sorts of things, but um, I, I just that's one thing that you maybe we can talk about it as, as well. Um, since 2014, I've actually had a portfolio career because I moved out of, of headship. And you, you can see this here. This, this is kind of like my little portfolio um, of my, my Venn diagram of the things that I do. So I'm involved in quite a bit of governance work and um, uh, you know, involved as a non-executive director of roles, government service, mostly in education, but not not all of them. Um, there are mem financial membership organisations, for example, which I'm involved in, and I like that because again, it's all about learning. It's about people growing and that kind of lifelong commitment. And then there's the executive coaching, which I do. So I do a lot of executive coaching, um, a lot of senior leaders in education. Oh, here's somebody else coming in. Well, actually, Carly, you can in, in, you can invite people in as well, can't you? Um, and also, what's particularly relevant today is the international um, recruitment and consultancy. And I think this is somebody, I think that, yeah, I want to say hello to Bex, particularly, who's just arrived. So, so hello, 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 hello. So we're just talking about me, but uh, you know a bit about me anyway. So, um, right. So this is um and this is the important bit really this is that i'm going to, to be talking about about recruitment and um, what that means in practice at the moment so how what are the lessons from the pandemic well this is kind of this is the summary of it and i'm going to go into a little bit more detail about a few general things but these but when i was asked to pull together all my lessons for the pandemic is that really you you need to drive your career. You always needed to drive your career, um, but you you need to, and there are opportunities. So patterns have changed. It's really interesting to see that it's, it's there aren't the same patterns that there were of the same jobs coming up at the same times and people going in the same places. I think that's because people have, you know, there are really strong um, 
quite, quite primal uh, elements going on there. People wanting to, to either go home or people wanting to make the most of life or, you know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of been a lot of uncertainty. It's rocked a number of schools in terms of, well, you know, do we want to keep the people we've got or, or do we want to do something? Some schools have gone under, some schools have, have, have grown uh, and, and there's still such a lot of heightened uncertainty that I, I think that means that whenever that's the case, it's an opportunity. So there are opportunities opening up. And I think that I, when I wrote that, I was thinking it's not just the opportunities that are out there waiting to be taken. It's the opportunities for you to grow and say, mm, actually, do you know what? This is what I would want, want to do. And I didn't, hadn't thought about that before, but I'm going to do that. So I think there's, there's something really important there. When we talk about coaching a little bit later, I think we'll see that, that too. Well, hopefully you will. However, undeniably, prejudices remain the same. There are enormous prejudices still um, about uh, women in, the, uh, in, in leadership. It shouldn't be the case. It makes me so cross that that's the case, but they are there. And we still have to work hard to overcome them. It'd be nice to think, actually, no, everything's all fine and everything's all equal. It's not, and it should be. And, and that's one of the reasons when um, Carly approached me and said, oh, you know, do you want to come? And I said, like, yes, I'll come, I'll come. I'll come and talk to you to say that. Um, and I see that really from a recruiter perspective. Now, luckily, you know, being involved in recruitment, working with LSE Education, we've got really open mind. We want to, to bring people. In fact, I'll probably, probably overcompensate in some ways and say, look, I really want to make sure that this person's presented really well to try and overcome the prejudices of people who are who think still that a school leader needs to be um, white, male, or and tall as well. <laughs> tall, as if it makes any difference that you're tall for being a leader. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, maybe you can see more. I'm not sure, but it's that really. I'm only having five foot two and a half, so, so I'm not tall. But and I'm certainly really not. On, on Zoom, it doesn't matter how tall you are. We're, we're all the same height. <laughs> yeah, we're only about 30 centimetres on Zoom anyway. <laughs> That's true. Um, but anyway, these are still there. And we can't, well, in a sense, we can't ignore them. It just means it's hard. And I suppose sometimes when there are hard days, I think, well, do you know what? I'm doing this for my daughters and, and, and so because we've got to keep going. I'm doing this for, for everybody. And, and we all do need to. So my message from that is you know, be bold because life is short actually, and you only have one, one life. And um, so, you know, make the most of it. So those are kind of my key messages, but I've got lots of other things I'd like to share with you because I think it's really important that, that you think about, spend time thinking about why you might want to look for a new role. And there are, there are reasons here um, which you will recognize. And if you can identify what your reasons are, I think it helps. So yes, there's the sense of personal fulfillment and, and professional fulfillment. And the more you can understand about yourselves in that, the easier it is. So you're not just going down the route of saying, um, oh yeah, you know, that's the expected next step, or I think I ought to do that. You no, know, who are you? What are your motives? What, what, what drives you? And how will you get that fulfillment? Because you, even if you haven't experienced this, this yourself, you, you probably have experienced other people who, who said, I really want to do this, I really want to do this. And then the job turns out not to be what it was they thought it would be. And that may be about the job itself, but it also may be because they've had um, a false understanding of who they are in that, that process. So I think um, being really aware of, of why it is you're looking for a new role is important. Sometimes it's just time for a change. Yeah, you've grown a bit bored. We tend to think, oh, you can't grow bored. Well, you, actually, coming back to this, life is too short. You know, let's make a change. Let's do something. Maybe a change in your personal circumstances, and that's perfect. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And go, oh, well, you know, I want to come back to the UK, um, uh, you know, because I want to look after my parents. Well, yeah, great. You know, super. That's what you want to do. That's your choice. That's your, that's your own this. Yes, we still have to overcome the fact that you're, you've got to be careful in, if you're applying for a job to say why you want to go to the job, not just um, 
away from something. Ooh, um, uh, the so so, but that's part of the the application for the, the the role as well. So I was just looking in the chat quickly. Um, again, that's one of the things I'm not I, I keep forgetting to do. So hopefully Carly will keep me on track as far as that is concerned. Right, and also I think there's something there about part of our human drive. There's something there about let's move forward, let's move inexorably forward. Um, not all the time, and there are times when we need to to stop and wait. And sometimes I feel that you know I must have been terribly bad in a previous life to keep being driven forward. You know, just to keep going. But there's something there's something there that I mean I like to think that's what we're in education for to help development and growth and and so you know that that's part of who who we are too so let me just move this on I think you do have to know yourself as a leader and where you are and your your stage as a leader um, this is all part of the knowing yourself and um and part of the delving into yourself you know are you starting out are you growing um as a leader? where do you like being in all of this, because schools are like this, and schools and 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 um, human beings are like this. Starting out the growing, the kind of consolidating. Wait, I just got this kind of basking in it, you know, enjoying the moment. For some people, that's really short, and for other people, that's that's a lot longer. And then there's the kind of reinventing, which then leads to the starting out and so. Think about it. Schools are like this in the sense that you have startups, then they'll grow, they might consolidate, they might just say, oh, we're marvellous. But really, if they're any good, they'll also then be reinventing, they'll be moving forward in terms of creating. So the question is, where are you in that as, as, a, as a, a person, as, a, as a, an educator, as a leader? Where do you like to be at this moment in your life? And where is the school? Because if you are a consolidating type person, that's your natural zone, but the school is a, a starting up school, then is it actually going to be a good fit for you? So think about all of those, those areas. And it is really, really important to understand the, the fit of the school. And I'll show you why, because um, back in 2018, we did some research with, um, through LSC of school leaders, there's over 200 leaders, I think about, and it's, it's you can download this and it is, um, it's really interesting. It's pre-pandemic, but it is, it's just the universal truths, I think, in, in, in this. Um, and there's a lot in there about people, about the kind of roles they've gone for and, and so on. One of the key things that, that I picked up from this was how easy it is to, to get it wrong um, and how we need to look to get it right in terms of the good fit and the poor fit. I'm going to show you the poor fit in a moment. <coughs> the, um, the, the, so this is gathered from all these different, um, these people, and they were asked to say, what were the top three elements that had led to a success in a, a, a single role? So if it's a good fit, then it, you're looking at these strong relationships with um, key staff. You get a good match with your experience, your knowledge and training. That's the orange bit going around. Good match between the leadership style and the school stage. That's just what I've been talking about. Strong match of values and strong and effective relationship with the board, the governors, the other, and so on. And it goes all the way around. So these are all the elements that are involved in a good fit. How do you find that good fit? You find it by really getting to know the school and really understanding it. So. I mean, you know that that um, school websites usually say that they're marvelous. You know, the best place in the whole world. You know, it's um, it's like you know, fantastic. Oh my, why why haven't I seen this school before? Because it clearly is the most brilliant thing ever. So so you've got to be thinking about that, um, but really delving beneath the surface. There'll be all sorts of different elements in that. This is the good fit. The poor fit particularly the more senior you become as a leader it's to do with the relationship between the board the governors the owner and owners and, and, and you whoever's above you so micromanagement um lack of clarity a lack of relationship and then your mismatch of values and obviously lack of resources and funding and so on all sorts of things um uh, in there but that that's why those relationships and understanding that is so important so this has come from the research absolutely fascinating to, to look at it and think about it. You've got to be thinking about how you get underneath the surface 
of the school. So you're, I suppose the, the, what I'm pointing out so far is there are opportunities, lots of opportunities. It's up to you to, to, um, to take those and create those. Know yourself first and then know where you're going. And th as best you possibly can, find out as best you possibly can. And as part of this um, process, um, I, I really do think, and you, you talked about mentoring earlier, and I really do think that coaching or mentoring both actually um, are, are really, really valuable. I mean, there is a difference between coaching and mentoring. Um, mentoring is, uh, as well as you know, it's about going to people who are experienced already, who can uh, share their experience with you. Coaching is more challenging. It's one of the reasons I trained as a coach um, to the ILM level seven, postgraduate level, because I, I began to see it's really, really important. This, this ability to be able to ask the right questions, challenge people and not say, oh yes, and the same thing happened to me, you know, I'll tell you, that's mentoring. But coaching is challenging you because when you've got all of these different elements around there, there's elements of, you know, who am I? Um, which you think would be a straightforward question, but it usually isn't. You know, who am I? What's the school like? What do I really want? What are the opportunities? Is this the right one to go for? Is that then then having helping having somebody to help you pull that apart um, is actually um, I think really, really valuable. So I think it's really important. I feel very passionate about it. Um, and you own you will know what it looks like in practice if you've experienced it. And there are all sorts of different coaches you can have, there are all sorts of different mentors you can have. I would say as, as far as is reasonably possible, given that there are only 24 hours in the day, really try and get that input to help you. Remember, we make better decisions when we have different perspectives around us. That's, um, that's why we talk about collaboration. That's why we, we, you know, we work on, on um, in schools, trying to encourage young people to, to ask questions and talk to one another about things. So let's do it ourselves. We spend such a lot of time giving that you do need to, to demand and take in many ways. So I just put a little thing here about what to look for in a good coach or mentor. Won't dwell on that because it's kind of obvious um, in, in many ways. You know, an affinity with you, um, empathy, style that suits you, flexibility. I think that's really important, flexibility. Um, not saying, oh gosh, you know, I've got to get things ready for my coach because can, can only see my coach can only see me on this particular time. You need that um, th that there. And I just think that. I, it, I think that this thing about a match with your space is important. Um, that doesn't mean you've got to watch that because you don't want to, it to turn into a, a mentoring relationship um, if, it's, if you're looking at coaching. But you do want to be able to engage with people and understand and feel as though you've got some shared understanding this is where we need to go so I mean I know that my space is often with with people who, who don't know what it is they want to do and I get a lot of satisfaction about helping them realize they do know it's just in there so and and you can experiment and you have the, the courage to do that that's great yes there are practicalities there's time it's cost it's you know all of those things but you know we make sure if there are things that are important to us, we we do them, you know. And I think that that's that that's just what you need to 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 be aware of. Now I've just got a couple more um uh, a couple more slides I could just I'd slip in, even though they're not properly part of this. But I just really wanted to share them um since I'm here, and um I, I just thought, you know actually I've got to share my idea about a good CV, and we can talk about that um more. Just because you want to make your CV as good as possible and um and you know uh, think about think about that this isn't just about you saying what you want you're actually writing to somebody and you're trying to persuade them that you're the right person and remember that you're having to do that even more because they've still got that picture in their mind of what a leader looks like so you're having to over communicate be even more focused um Aim, this is why I put these things in here. You know, clearly focused, a good CV. It's not just, this is who I am. It's, I am the person you want. And this is, this is how I'm demonstrating to you. 
And you do that in the letter, but you also do it in the CV because that's the first thing people will look at the application form. They will glance at that and they want to be able to read and see that, that you are the person for them. So it's going to be easy to read. It's going to be aimed at the audience and it's going to have all these other elements as well. I think it should be visual. I don't mean like lots and lots of pictures, um, but it should be, you should be able to glance at it and get a sense of who you are. Um, it has to be accurate. And by that, I, I do actually mean spelling accurate, spelling and grammar accurate. Um, and it does need to be complete um, with no gaps um, because otherwise someone's going to ask anyway. So you may as well put them in. Yes, particularly in education. And if they're not asking, then that's a big red flag as well, actually. You know, if they say, oh, yeah, I noticed that there were about three years that you, you did have, that's fine, it doesn't matter. Um, yes, it does, because you might have been in Wormwood Scrubs then, actually, um, or what the female equivalent is. Right, um, so I just wanted to slip that one that in. And then there were just something else I just wanted to slip in as well about you standing out as an applicant, um, which is about you communicating really well with them right from the outset, you're really crafting your application, connect with them, just use a critical friend, please, to, to, to just check, is this me or is it just my false idea of who I am? Or, or am I, as is often the case, underselling myself in this you, know, you will need somebody to go yeah right yes you can yeah of course you can do this you're brilliant let's do that and I put that little thing in in red down at the bottom just keep polishing those antennae just keep saying what is it they want is this the right fit for me and and that does not mean it absolutely does not mean do I meet all um uh, do I meet 12 out of the 10 uh, point, bullet points there are that are uh, there? Um, because we need to get into the habit of applying for things when we only meet seven of them or six of them even, if you think it's the right place. So it doesn't mean that, but it does mean, are these relationships going to be right? Am I in the right place? Is this going to suit my needs uh, as well? Can I bring something to this? Will I enjoy it? Um, and, and all of that. So that, those are my slides. I just had this thing about keep in touch, um, which um, I'm not difficult to find, so you can keep in touch, certainly. But what I'm going to do is stop sharing so I can see you a little bit better. There we go. And um, so we've got about 15 minutes, I think, for, for any, any comments or anything. I don't know, Cardi, do you want to keep recording this or do you uh, the, the, should we should we stop recording so that we can have just some open uh, uh, communication about things right okay now yes yeah, so it's always more organic when you know you know you're not yeah. being recorded <laughs>